Next, let's present an NFS data store. This actually takes significantly less steps than iSCSI, and in many ways is a little bit simpler. It does have some of the additional benefits of NFS, which is it's very easy to present to many, many hosts. The first thing you need to do is, in the same way with iSCSI, you need to enable the NFS client uh, um, on the firewall. So just make sure that those ports are open. And again, do that on every node that you're going to be presenting the NFS data store to. Now, on the Solera, what we're going to do is we're going to first create a new file system. So we're going to open up the wizard. So new file system. And what you'll see here is the wizard for configuring this. Let's zoom in a little. Again, you're going to select the data mover that you want to uh, use in the configuration. Either configure specifically where you want to go or use a pool. Pool being simpler, manual layout, allowing you to very much tune where uh, what the performance envelope of a file system will be. Um, you can pick the tier. Again, RAID type, RAID 10, RAID 5, RAID 6. Um, and we'll give it a name and a size. So here we'll make it a 4 gig file system. You notice once again, uh, you can spe specify volume retention. Auto extend basically allows you to have the file system automatically expand. And virtual provisioning is EMC's uh, name for thin provisioning, which you know our view on it is virtual provisioning is thin provisioning with no caveats. Um, it'll automatically detect and, and respond to thin uh, to out of space conditions. And then you could specify detailed user quotas for the file system if you wanted to. Once this step is done, we've got a brand new file system on the Solera, which we're going to use as an NFS export. So, now going to the NFS Exports tab, a task that's so simple that it doesn't even require a wizard doesn't have a wizard. So um, you'll see here that configuring an uh, NFS export is a one-step process. Um, so we're going to create a new NFS export. First of all, we're going to pick the file system that we want. And note the path, because you're going to need that later on. For an ESX server, what you do is you specify all the ESX servers that you want to have access to this data store by uh, their uh, IP addresses. By the way, you're allowed to use wildcards here, and if you went up to the upper right-hand section of this page where there's that question mark, you'd see the exact syntax. You can use CIDR notation as well as various other wildcards. I'm just uh, specifying them here explicitly. Once those are all explicitly listed, you go in and you say okie dokie. And at the end of this process, that uh, file system has now been exported. Here you can now see, by the way, in a nice simple screen, all the exports that you'd have. By the way, this is the uh, context specific help you know basically now we're using the Solera as if it's a real Solera you can use the context specific uh, context uh, based help or you can download the manuals for the Solera if you want now what we're going to do is we're basically going to uh, um, present that NFS export to the ESX server and as I said in that note one thing that's nice is it's very very easy to uh, uh, as you saw specify that across a whole bunch of hosts in fact, across even ESX clusters, which you can't do with VMFS, and even across data centers, but that is not a geographically dispersed cluster. So what we're going to do here is we're going to specify the server and the path. So this is the interface on the, on the uh, data mover. The folder is the path that we saw in the earlier step. And again, NFS data stores are useful for a ton of purposes. And my view is that every ESX cluster should have both some block and some NFS data stores. Some things work better on one than another, and really customers should be looking at vendors that can support uh, all their protocol needs, whether it's iSCSI, Fiber, or NFS, and who knows in the future maybe even things like FCOE. Um, 
in particular, the NFS data stores, again, have got that property where it's very easy to create very large NFS data stores. It's very easy to create NFS data stores that span many, many hosts. It's also very simple and easy to snapshot individual VMs and recover them with NFS. Um, although EMC has launched a new product called uh, Replication Manager um, uh, that now supports VMFS volume, so you can do the same thing on block now too. But conversely, there's certain things that you can only do on block protocols. So, uh, you know, some of those things involve uh, qual, for example, storage vMotion currently isn't qualed on iSCSI or on, on, um, or on NFS, um, as well as additional things like uh, Site Recovery Manager that currently only support block protocols. So, you know, really my opinion is don't trust folks who tell you it's about one or the other. Uh, why not have both? Um, I, in particular, use NFS data stores for things like ISOs and, and uh, templates that are very useful to have universally around on my entire environment. Um, so definitely things to consider. As well, one thing to consider with the IP protocols is that uh, until future uh, ESX releases, it still is a little bit harder than uh, it is with, uh, with block and fiber in particular to achieve very high throughput. Um, that has to do with how uh, the VM kernel uh, behaves essentially sending stuff down one path by default. There are some very specific things that you can do to avoid that um, that are detailed in detail on the Solera uh, um, VMware solutions guide um, which basically can describe how you can configure multiple uh, uh, NFS server exports as well as iSCSI targets um, on different subnets to solve that core problem. Thanks and have fun. You now have got a, basically a working iSCSI target working NFS server. Um, you can use it for anything that you could use a real Solera. In subsequent sessions, what we're going to be talking about is uh, how to configure replication, site recovery manager, how to add more storage to the Solera sim. But for now, um, play around and have some fun. And post any questions that you've got to virtualgeek.typepad.com. Um, and once again, you can always go to the Solera support area on the official EMC support forums which is forums.emc.com, and log in with a PowerLink uh, login. If you don't already have one, just create one. Thanks very much. Have a great day.